Hi, thanks everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm just looking forward to the time when they realize what a mistake it was to not only have me, but to ask me to go first. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me, so, so fortune favors, um, just in case any of you happen to be my dad um, and fluent in Latin, you'll know that fortune, the word fortune comes from fortuna, uh, the Roman god of luck and chance. Um, and sort of what better sort of embodiment, uh, the sort of quintessential embodiment in American society of luck and chance than the subject of my research, uh, the American lottery system. Um, so let me, let me start just with maybe a brief show of hands. How many of you have heard this idea, this concept, that the lottery is a stupid tax or a tax on people who are bad at math um, or a poor tax? I actually can't see you all very well, so I'm just going to assume every single hand uh, just went up, which is perfect. Um, so I'd like to sort of uh, dissuade and see if I can sort of poke some holes in the idea and sort of change our thinking about, again, the sort of quintessential vehicle of chance that we have in society and what it really means. Uh, to all of us and then those who, who participate in it. Um, just to sort of set the stage, so we're all sort of talking about the same thing. Um, Americans spend $108 billion with a B um, on lottery tickets every year, which is more than they spend on video streaming services, concert tickets, books, and movie tickets combined. Uh, half of Americans buys a lottery ticket at least once a year. One in eight Americans buys a lottery ticket at least once a week. Um, and so over the course of my research, um, I spent a lot of time uh, sort of going to different states with lotteries, and I guess this is what research is these days, is hanging out in convenience stores, uh, talking to people um, about their sort of lottery experience and why they play and what they play. Um, and I'd like to just sort of briefly introduce you to one, one of these lottery players uh, uh, in Chicago. His name is, who, who I'll say is sort of perfectly prototypical, like designed in a lab to be the perfect lottery player and, and the perfectly statistically representative lottery player. Um, his name is Leo McCord. Uh, he's an African-American man in Chicago in his early 70s. Uh, went to college for a couple years but didn't finish. Um, w worked for, for a few years or many years uh, for the city of Chicago, um, but sort of mi mi middle to lower income. Um, and Leo has played the Illinois lottery every single day since 1974. Um, since, the, since the day it started in 1974. And he has a couple different tickets that he likes. He buys some Powerball tickets, he buys some Mega Millions, uh, he buys scratch tickets. Uh, but the real, number, the real games that he likes are the three and four digit daily numbers games. Um, he has two lucky numbers if you want to write these down. Uh, two, uh, 2045 and 916, which he's insisted they haven't done anything yet, but he's sure any day now they're sort of, they're sort of due, due to hit. Um, and in 2007, he actually won $100,000 um, in the lottery, with most of which he used to fix up his mom's apartment, buy himself a car, nothing, nothing too flashy. Uh, but even with, even with that windfall, he knows that he's lost more than he's won uh, over the course of the last 50 years. And he sort of justifies his lottery play in a way that I think it's, it's, it's hard for someone who doesn't play the lottery to understand. He justifies his lottery play as saying, you know, some people buy concert tickets, some people buy alcohol, some people will go to the movies. I, you know, I just play the lottery. And I spend a lot of time sort of strategizing, dreaming about what I would do if I won, uh, uh, things like that. Again, and, and what he gets that I think doesn't sort of show up on the stat sheet um, is he gets a lot of value even from losing tickets, right? From the, from the days, the minutes, the hours, the sort of the chance he has to dream of what it would be like if he won the lottery. That you know, some people are willing to dream about winning the lottery even without a ticket in their hand, but some people sort of really feel like they need that skin in the game, um, and, and that's Leo. And when I say that he's statistically representative, I really mean it. 80% um, of lottery sales in the country come from the top 30% of lottery players, and that group looks exactly like Leo. It is disproportionately lower income, non-white, less educated, and male. Um, so, okay, so I said I was gonna poke holes in the idea that the lottery is a stupid tax or a poor tax, and all I've done so far is provide evidence that it is a poor tax. Um, so let me sort of try to, try to pivot a little bit. In that, what I think is actually happening here, in addition to this sort of entertainment that lottery players get from, from their games, is players turn to the lottery because for many of them, it is nothing less than their last, best, or only chance at the American dream. Uh, they have come to reason, correctly or not, but they've come to reason that through the traditional economy, through their work, through entrepreneurship, they have no chance, zero, no chance at a better life, not to mention at wealth. And the lottery at least offers some chance at all of those things. 
So this isn't like Leo failed a high school statistics class and, there, and now becomes a lottery player because he doesn't know how probability works. I promise he knows how, the lottery probability a lot better than probably everyone in this room. What, he, what he's done though, and millions of other people like him, is reasoned, I think somewhat correctly, that really they, it's, it offers very, very distant odds, but at least it offers some odds. Odds that they're not gonna get anywhere else and they can't find anywhere else. So again, this is not like some irrational belief. Oh, I've, he, he, he's not, he, he sees it clearly. He knows clearly just how bad the odds are. Um, and let me, let me just for reference. So, the odd, so tomorrow night there's a $700 million Powerball drawing, okay? The odds of winning Powerball or, or Mega Millions, very similar, are one in 302 million, or roughly 300 million, which is just incalculable. I guess it doesn't sound that big, but it's incalculable. Okay, so the odds of winning a Mega Millions, for example, is if you took an ant, put it onto four football fields, and stabbed a needle into the ground, right? That's, that's your odds of winning, of winning the Mega Millions. So, yeah. Uh, um, okay, but let, let, me, let, me, let, let, me, let me get another show of hands. How many people here have bought at least one Powerball Mega Millions ticket when the jackpot got really big and it gets on the news when it's a billion dollars. Again, every single hand has gone up. I can't see you all. That's perfect. Um, so, so I understand. I understand that sort of orders of magnitude, right, of difference. Of you are you're playing, you know, two dollars once a year, right? You're in that 50% of Americans who buys a lottery ticket once a year, right? You're playing in orders of magnitude difference uh, than someone like Leo McCord. But really, if we're all being honest with ourselves you're engaged in the exact same type of thinking that we sort of condemn when we see, have among lottery players. No offense. Uh, you know, lottery, the, the, what, you're, what you're doing, what I think the human mind is prone to do when we have these sort of incalculably lar long odds and unfathomably large sums of money, right, is to dream, right, and to engage in sort of wishful, hopeful, maybe ira mathematically irrational thinking about sort of underestimation of how bad your odds are and overestimation that you're gonna win and what it would do for your life. Um, don't, oh, for the record, don't get me started on people who will like buy a billion dollar, a ticket for a billion dollar jackpot but not $700 million as if that's like not enough to change their life, okay. Um, so, but, but I'm saying what, what, what Leo does and what sort of is condemned, right, in some circles by people, by sort of poor people like Leo is something that we all sort of exhibit right, when we are willing to buy our lottery tickets once a year, even if we see it as a lark and he sees it as something else, we're really sort of engaged uh, in the exact same type of thinking. And, and let me do you one better. The reason we have lotteries in the first place is because states, policymakers, voters, engaged in the exact same type of wishful thinking that a lottery would solve all of their financial problems. <laughs> So what you had going back, you know, 60 years was government who wanted, or states who wanted to fund services, voters who didn't want to pay taxes, and this sort of belief, this, this states that just basically bet on betting as a silver bullet solution to their state's financial problems. Um, and their willingness to sort of take the, the dreams for a jackpot of people like Leo and let, hope that those dreams would fund their own jackpot uh, for the state. Okay, and if you think I'm exaggerating, I, I promise in 60 years of sort of lottery history, because that's a thing, um, there, you never get a, po a politician who gets up there and says, you know, a lottery is going to be great. It's going to provide 1.7% of the funding for the general fund, okay? What you get are folks like Congressman Cornelius Gallagher from New Jersey, who in 1968 said, quote, with a lottery, we could abandon all taxation in New Jersey and increase every service in our state four times over. Okay, this is, this is like really like how it started. And then it's sort of, okay, it doesn't work in New Jersey, but you know, I'm sure it's gonna work for us in, in Connecticut. And then it doesn't work in Connecticut. It's like, oh, I'm sure it's gonna work for us in Georgia. And then lo and behold, here we are with 45 lottery states uh, and $100 billion in sales every year because of this cognitive dissonance and this belief, this hopeful, wishful, irrational belief by states, by policymakers, that a lottery is gonna solve all their financial problems, again, very parallel, very similar to the belief that sort of bring Leo uh, to his local convenience store every single day. Um, so I'll, I'll sort of cl close on that, which is th that I think that the, this phrase, this idea of a stupid tax or a tax on people who are bad at math, uh, it really fundamentally is sort of victim blaming, uh, right? We're taking the sort of the losers in the economy who don't see other chances uh, to get out and we, they've, got, they've got one chance, right? They've got this one chance that they see it provided by the state and we basically call them stupid for trying and for going after it. And, and, and I think that's, that's 
should change or should be rethought in large part because, again, we're all prone to these same types of thinking uh, at the government level, at the individual level, at the personal level. Um, and just to sort of put my cards on the table, um, I, ha I have here in my pocket a uh, ticket for the $700 million Powerball drawing uh, tomorrow night. Thank you. I'm assuming you're applauding because they're the winning numbers. Uh, but uh, I have it because somebody's got to win, and it might as well be me. Thanks very much.